Oh boy, I'm so sorry, you guys. I don't know what happened there because it let me hook back up, but it didn't, it cut me off for some reason. So if that happens again, I will start the video immediately and we'll be right back. I am so sorry that happened. So basically, let me see if I get anybody in here and, um, oh, please, please, you guys, I hope you find this. Let's see, what do I do here? Um, <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Okay, so we've got people back. Good. I'm so sorry. Do not know what just happened, but my internet literally cut on me. So um, so basically what you're going to do, look how pretty this looks. When you use a, a complementing, like I took the gold off of here, and I put it here, and here, and here. So it just stands out. It, it, it's very very finished looking and when you're when you're done with it because when you first sew it it's gonna be a little like this and when you actually take your spray bottle or your heat your, you know your iron to it afterwards with your cloth on top of it because you don't want to scorch your ribbon um, it's gonna lay just like this it's gonna look really pretty okay so let's get busy I'm gonna show you how to cut it stick this over here now because I've already got one cut, um, I'm, I mean, uh, I'm going to show you as if this was my five yards, okay? You're going to take your five yards of fabric, and you're going to hold it like this. So you've got this long stretch, right? It could go from one wall to the other. You're going to take it around your waist. Okay, you're going to take your hand out on one side for as long as you want the skirt. I usually go to my outside of my arms. Now, I don't have a very big waist, but you want to make it go around the thickest part of your tush, <laughs> your hips, because you want this to be able to be what you want. It. Okay, so I lean forward and take a step forward, right? Because you want to be able to go like this and you want to be able to See, like this, because you want to be able to take a step or run if you have to, or fight if you have to, right? <laughs> That's what I was taught. You, <laughs> then you're going to take it like this, because you have it here, right? This side's cut. You're going to hold it here, right where it is. You're going to get your scissors. You're going to clip it, and I know people don't like to do this. Trust me. On this one, it's okay to do it. Flip it, tear away, tear away, okay? <laughs> That's what you're going to do. It's that simple, okay? Once you have that done, you're going to take your ends and you're going to match them up the best you can, okay? Take your fabric like this and flip it like that. So you get it all straight, right? Okay. Now we're going to take it over here. And I'm going to switch out since I'm actually using my other fabric now. Because I have another fabric over here that's the right size and it's the same fabric I'm using. I'll finish this one later and show you what it's going to look like. Because it's going to have bumblebees on it and it's a save the bees one. So, alright. Let me get my... Here we go. As you can see, I have this one lined out and pinned. And what I'm going to do is move all this back here. So you guys can see, I'll move the ribbon over here. Okay, I'm going to bring that camera a little closer so you guys can see better. That's good. Let's just have me fall on my face here. <laughs> okay. I think I can even get that to tilt if we need to. How's that? Right there. That's about good. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I have the same fabric right here, right? And it's in half, right? So I've got my two ends just like that one was right here. Two ends. 
like this. I have my other ends. I'm going to flip it. And I'm going to lay it down exactly in half. And the reason is, is because now once your fabric is all the way one piece, you're going to take right here where the, where the fold is and you're going to cut it open. And to do that, let me move my pins and grab my scissors. To do that, you just come straight down here, lift it up, let your scissors pull on the fabric, and go straight down. You cannot mess this up, trust me. You're fine to just cut it down the side, boom, right? I'll give you guys a second and I'm gonna stand here like, okay, I just cut down this side. And we're gonna take this side over here and meet it to this side. So you're gonna have another corner, another, another fold on this side, right? Okay. This is when you're gonna meet your ends up. They don't have, now this is why it's important that you don't have to worry about how they're going to match up. If they're a little tiny bit off, it's okay because we're gonna make a cut on that side. So then hold it like this. See, I just smoothed it all out facing me, right, like this. I'm going to pick those loose ends up, not the fold. Go over here. And now you can just smooth it, smooth it out like this. And see where your corner is down here? Okay, so the rule of thumb is when you take your your elastic right you're gonna cut elastic so then you're gonna take this you're gonna fold it in half fold it again and fold it one more time three times okay did you catch that this went around my waist you're gonna fold it in half fold it in half and fold it in half again. You're gonna lay it on the corner of your skirt, right here, like that. This is where you're gonna cut, right here, all right? So aiming towards this corner right here, I'm gonna use my roller. Pull my board underneath, make sure I don't cut my bed. <laughs> Need my bed after surgery. And I'm gonna go straight down to that corner. Now it doesn't have to be a completely straight, but as straight as you can get it, this is gonna be an A-line dress. A ribbon skirt traditionally is an A-line skirt. It's just a skirt that has a little narrowing at the hip and flare more at the bottom. Now, does is there any hardcore, you have to have a ribbon skirt this length or that length? No. But because of respect, you want to be modest. So in different ceremonies and things like that, you'd want longer ones. But if you're a dancer, sometimes you're gonna want a shorter one that kind of goes mid-calf with your, with your mocks, right? Or with your boots or whatever you're wearing. Um, you know, whether you're wearing normal shoes, sandals, whatever, you're going to want a little bit of a little bit higher if you're out in the middle of something doing something where it's like um, you're dancing. I know like jingle dancers or you've got and a lot of people do different things. So even jingle dancers will have ribbon on their jingle dresses. So, you know, it just depends on what you're doing. It's OK. Just please no mini skirts. <laughs> I'll get in trouble from my elders if they go, what are you teaching? <laughs> okay, I can see my mom go now, Rita Joy. <laughs> okay, back to work. So this is also very important. I have really long hair. You want to put your hair up like this. There's two reasons. You don't want to cut your hair. <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> rolled right over it um and you don't want to um <laughs> yeah that's true I did um and the other thing is that you 
don't want your hair when you spray your adhesive on your fabric adhesive onto the fabric you don't want your hair sticking to things when you're trying to lay ribbon it's a pain when you're doing this the whole time and trying to braid it and yeah just put your hair up now you'll thank me later so now we have two sides of the skirt yeah and they're facing each other now see that the way we did that they're facing each other okay so i'm gonna open it up now because it's cut properly and i'm gonna place it on here with my bottom part facing me my closest to me on my board And I'm gonna look at my, um, I'm gonna get my tape measure, my, um, where is it? Tape measure, okay, we got the ribbon here. Where was, oh, this is the gold ribbon. Um, by the way, I am making a skirt, the skirt that I am making will go up for uh, fundraising for SFNN for Christmas. So if you guys are interested in picking a skirt up this would be a great way to do it and this will be the skirt i'm thinking i was going to make it with the gold again i found some really really pretty um gold satin written ribbon i'm a completely satin ribbon so let's find here it is right here and i picked some up right here in two different sizes so I have this one and I have a little thinner one right here. And I thought, okay, well we can use those. And then what about some orange, right? Because this one in here has the orange in it and it really draws attention to all the other colors. Oh, here's another thing, a little tip that I found. Um, I was gonna tell you this later, but I can tell you now also is that when you um when you buy thread and you're doing it for the top stitching of ribbon skirts you can buy the embroidery thread and it is beautiful because it has a sheen to it it's more silky and it's for that top stitch for that look so you're not holding all your construction together even though it is holding as it's very strong a zigzag um but it gives you a little bit more of a, a polished look to the actual ribbon the, the uh, thread work on the ribbon. So if you have uh, embroidery stitches and you wanna do a little embroidery stitch on yours instead of a typical zigzag um, throughout one of your patterns or something, and that's something that you want to do, you know, it's your ribbon skirt. Take pride in that, own that skirt. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, so yeah, use the satin, satin or just use the cotton, but you want to use a really good thread so that it's not, all of your work doesn't go to waste because if your ribbon skirt starts falling apart, and trust me, the way I tell you to make it, it shouldn't be falling apart because I'm really thorough. My mom was a stickler on things like that. Um, so in fact, I'm very honored. She asked me to make her a ribbon skirt. I'm like, Ooh, mom wants me to make one. So, okay. So I have this one too. And I thought, okay, which one should I use? I've got the dark orange. I have this one. Um, I have this thinner orange right here. Maybe I'll just use this one right here. Let's put this one away. And then we've got this right here. And I had one other orange. Here it is, like a little, I wasn't sure about this one, but it could work. So you want to play around with your ribbons, is what I'm trying to say. You're right now, if you've got your skirt out, start playing around. Just do this. We're not going to spray it yet. We will get there. Go, hmm, do I like it this way? Do I like it like this? Do I want to skip one and, every, and then go up like it's a sunset? You know, maybe it's, it's the golden, maybe it's the golden hills. And I, and I want to do something like that to remind me of the landscape and the birds and, or maybe I'm thinking residential schools and I want to do something with orange, you know, for the children that didn't come home and the birds represent the, them flying home, you know, we're coming home creators. So what is it you want that to mean? Well, for me, I thought, I love that. And this, this. I thought this was perfect because we also do grandmother's calling and and uh as you know so much is going on with the residential schools now my uh 
my family has also got their stories with residential schools too. So it's kind of, um, for me, I think I'm going to do a spectrum. I'm going to do something like this. Very simple. Okay. So I'm going to make this skirt a different layout than this one that I've already got pre-sewn a little bit because I was at the bank all day today trying to do some stuff. <laughs> and I had thought, thank goodness, last night, I'm going to sew this and get it ready and um, for the tutorial. So I think what I'm going to do is this. I'm liking this. And then let's see, do I want to add a thicker, another layer of orange? Mm, yeah, I don't know about that. Maybe the gold. Let's check the gold out. I've got a thinner gold. Do I like that? No, but do I like that? Yeah, I do. I'm liking it. It's pretty. You know, that's, it's really up to you on what you like. Yeah, maybe I will like that. So, I think I'm going to kind of go with something like this. I think that it's simple, it's elegant, people can wear it at Christmas. Now, here's the other question. Where do you like your ribbon to hit? That's something that I always tell people is, do you want it to be up here or and across your front? Now, I can show you a couple, couple examples of this right here. This one's low, okay? It goes down here around the knees okay this one is mid right here and that's evenly spaced by one inch apart so this one is back to back to back to back this one's one inch apart this one i did one inch apart and dropped to half an inch okay so i make it uniform however i did it this one's low this one's high you see that? So basically when you're making them low or you're making them around here to the midsection, that would be here. But if you want to go higher than that, I'll tell you how high to go, okay? I think what we're going to do here is maybe even, I think that's pretty, like that. You see that? I've got the gold, I've got the orange on both sides, and it's a simple layout. You know, it's festive. It's, it can mean something very special to someone who, who may put that same meaning towards it that I like. You know, it's a powerful meaning. You know, how much do the, does the eagle, it says that the eagle flies low, it watches man. When he flies high, he's, he's talking to creator. You know, this is, these are eagles all over this. I've thought about putting an eagle on this too, because I have some um personally myself later i may do it on the second one because i have a, an eagle applique already cut out and it's really pretty so let's see what we come out with, with this one i'll share it with you guys too okay so after you figure out what you want to do kind of keep that in your mind or set it off to the side how you want it Okay, so these are the ones I want to use. I want them in that order right there. I'm going to side it to the side, okay? Now I'm going to come over here, and if you want a low band, okay, because you're not, you're, oh, I forgot to, let me go back. If you, if you have your height right here, you know how, how long you are from your waist to the length you want it. You're gonna take that from the top and you're gonna fall two inches below it from the top. You're gonna to drop, to, you're gonna add two inches to your length. Then you're gonna add another inch and a half to your length, all right? So at the top, you're gonna to have two extra inches and at the bottom, you're gonna have an extra inch and a half. Go ahead and cut the bottom of your skirt to match your length. I'll give you a second. I'll be right back, I'm gonna get a drink real quick because I'm getting thirsty and I'll be right back and show you how to lay your ribbon and I'll take a look and see if there's any questions while we're here oh no um let's see okay miss L I'll go through and tell you which types of thread afterwards and um, I'm really sorry if it's not recording properly. Oh my goodness, okay. 
So if you guys should have your, if you're still measuring, remember you want to measure up here on your waist because your skirt's going to hit about right here. I'm going to add two inches on the top to your length and an inch and a half on the bottom, okay? Okay, so after you have that done, you're going to determine where you want your um, ribbon to lie. Now, because someone actually may be a little bit not as tall as me, well, did I just lose a pin? I did. Um, I think I'll make it maybe a little bit higher, but a little bit, I'll make it in the middle for me, okay? Now, if you're wanting to make it to the lower part, you're gonna go up on the bottom 15 and a half inches if you wanna make it on the bottom for a band on the bottom, okay? If you want to make it middle, you're gonna go up 21 inches. And if you want to make it higher than that, you're going to go up to 25 inches, all right? So for myself, I think I'm going to do the middle, like I said. Now, I'm going to line my board up for myself personally. And I like to get every single wrinkle out that you can get because now we're going to mark it with your pen or your chalk. So right here, I have a fabric pen, which is washable and it comes out. And I am going to, oh, where did I put my <laughs> tape measure? Um, I am going to take my tape measure and I'm going to go up for the 21 inches right here. You can see this right here, my 21. I'm gonna go right above, fold it, and I'm gonna hold my pen there till it goes all the way through. It's washable. Okay, and I go on the other side and I just flip it through again so I've got my one mark. I go over here and I do the exact same thing. 21 inches from the bottom. There we go. I'm gonna mark it on the very corner. Because remember, this corner is gonna be turned in anyways and even if you don't have a fabric pen and no one's going to see it but you, okay? But I, I use a fabric pen because, or chalk, because it just comes out in the laundry. Okay. Once you have that done, you're going to take your, your spray that I had you guys pick up, right here, and you're going to keep in mind how many rows you have. Now for me, I had this much space. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna eyeball how much space I'm gonna need right here for these four layers. <laughs> like that, okay? Basically like that, I think. Ah, how did I do that before? I messed myself up. <laughs> okay, so we have this one, then we had this one, then we had this one, and this one, I believe. Like this, yeah? We'll go like that. There we go, okay. So I'm gonna need this much space above my, my dots, right? Let's bring this over here. Now I'm going to move my ribbons out of the way, have my pins ready. Now this is where you have to just kind of use your, your eyeball here. And you can use your tape measure to kind of measure up if you need to, if you're not good at eyeballing something. But in general, rule of thumb, when I'm laying my ribbon, I'll hold it from here and I'll stretch it over to the other dot. And I'll hold it like this, and then I'll come in and I'll start smoothing it out, okay? so. Let's go ahead and spray this out. My dots are higher, so I'm gonna bring this lower towards me so I can work easier. Because when you're working, you wanna come down to where you're at, right? And you're gonna to wanna to pin like this. 
I'm gonna shake this up. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so you don't want to be too close to your fabric. Okay. And spray away. Come to the other end, spray inward so you don't get it all over the place. This will also wash out and it is not meant to stay in place this way. So you're going to have to use your pins. So I had wanted to use this orange, right? I'm going to come over here and I'm going, oh, my tape is there. Okay. I'm going to come over here and find my dot. And I want to start either at my dot, under my dot, or over my dot, all right? But you want to cover the dot. So here's my dot. I like to place it right at the edge over the dot. Because then I know where to hit it at the other side. So I also give myself a little bit of space. Um, because you don't know if your fabric's going to stretch. Sometimes it does. Sometimes you have to cut it on a, on the on a different on the bias or on a different uh, angle, the more of the stretch, because of the way the pattern is. And I've had that happen on this this little dress that I made for my granddaughter. The biggest pain, but I'm so glad it turned out. Um, the little one that I made for my granddaughter. <laughs> okay, the little one that I made for my granddaughter that I thought I showed you, the purple one. Um, I don't even know what I was going to say now. That's got me bothered. Where did I put it? <laughs> here it is. This one right here has little hummingbirds on it. Well, when I cut the material, the material would have made it so the hummingbirds were sideways and the flowers were like the it was, wisteria was sideways. So I literally had to take a piece like this and retrofit it. The other way, and when I put the ribbon on, oh, like this much extra, I, I'm so glad I put extra ribbon. So if you have extra ribbon to put on, do it. It's worth it. It's a saves your, it saves you a, a lot of heartache later if you have a problem. So I'm starting over here. I've just covered up on the bottom of my ribbon this dot. I'm going to go straight over and pull on my fabric and go straight over to the other side and lay it down. Then I'm going to start doing this. You see that? Voila! Okay. Once you have your first line done, now if you've decided you're going to do what I'm doing, which is laying them next to each other, we're just going to follow it up, follow it up, as many as you're going to go. Now, you may be ambitious, and you may want to do ten, five rows, ten rows. You may not be as ambitious. You may be going, I, this is my first one. I don't want to do so many. It's really up to you, and it's a personal, it's a personal choice. So now I'm going to take this one right here and you want to make sure with satin that you're looking at the right side because on any ribbon really, but especially on a pure satin because it, it's very close to being the same and you don't want it to not shine the right way. So here I am. Now I'm going to do it this way because I line it up as I go down all the way down the skirt. And as I go down, I push. See that? I'm just lining it up. Kind of rolling it into place because ribbon moves. See how that fabric kind of grew a little bit? I don't know if you just saw that, but the fabric grew. <laughs> There's that stretch I was talking about. Okay, so now I'm all the way over here. I like to leave my ribbon until it's all in place. I don't cut it until then. And if, if I don't have a lot of ribbon, I may not cut it at all. Because then when I come up and I figure out how much I need it, I can save ribbon by cutting it exactly where my sewing ends. So I've been known to do both, actually. All right, so here's this one. Let's throw in this color. Very pretty. It's looking like a sunset. Don't you love sunsets and sunrises? They're so beautiful. Such a peaceful time when we're supposed to go out alone by ourselves and meet creator and thank him for the day you know so many things have happened in the last year i'm thankful for the sunsets <laughs> i'm thankful for the peaceful days <laughs> okay 
So I'm almost done with this one. Then I'm going to lay my last row. And as I lay my last row, I'm going to pin. Now, believe it or not, but once you guys have pinned this, you're more than half done. Okay, so take your hand between your fabric, because you don't want to pin it to the other side, and just place a pin. Let me stop my dog, sorry. Just place a pin on the ends here and here so your ribbon doesn't get jostled. I'll be right back. Okay, <laughs> there we go. She can do that outside. So now I'm gonna come up here to my last row and line her up the same way I did the other ones. Okay, now once we do this and get this side pinned, I'll show you how you do the other side because this is where all the work on the ribbon work comes in. You want to go all the way to the end like this. And once again, pin your ribbon in place. Okay. Oops, see, that's exactly why you put your finger between. I just pinned my ribbon in place and it pinned both pieces. Now, if you do that, you have to unpin them all. So don't do what I just did. Okay, so for the sake of time, because I know this is about, I've already sewn this one and it's stretched on me, I'm gonna give it probably a little extra. I have put extra on this side, I put extra on that side. I'm going to kind of lift it up now because it will stick. See how it's stuck? I'm gonna lift it up take the bottom one out. We'll put it back in a minute. Now this is where you just go to town pinning. And the more pins that you have across, the better. And the reason being is because your ribbon will shift less, but also know that you may need to adjust those when you're sewing sometimes, because sometimes your fabric will move or, you know, there are reasons where you have to adjust it so that it shifts right. Um, so that it doesn't catch the ribbon the wrong way or lay the wrong way. As long as you keep your pins in there, it helps you keep your ribbon straight. And I, I can tell you right now, if you're in a really advanced seamstress, um, it can even mess you up if you don't use pins. Pins and iron. I was always taught iron everything and in between every stage because it's the difference between something laying flat and being tailored and something not. And I was taught by really great seamstresses that I, to my, I, I don't think I hold a candle to, but, you know, they're, they're just amazing people and they're really good at what they do. And, you know, I've been blessed to be taught by them. So what you want to do, go all the way across. Do you see how I'm doing it in small sections here? Let me show you. You see that? I've got a section here all the way down, here all the way down, maybe about four inches apart, all the way across. We're gonna do that all the way across the ribbon skirt. Make sure your ribbon is on there correctly. You don't wanna mess it up like I almost did just now. Okay, so normally I don't move it around so much, but I'm trying to show you guys how I'm doing this and I want to make sure you guys can see it um, so this is how I go all the way across and then I can flip this thing around. It doesn't matter if it gets space in between. The ribbon is not going to go that far out of, out of sync, especially when you're, you're clipping them every few inches apart. You're, you're pinning them, right? But the thing is, you will go through a lot of pins this way, I warn you. If you're making more than one ribbon skirt, you want to... Um, be aware that that's going to be something you need a lot of pins to do a ribbon skirt. 
Now, I have had times when you, if you don't have a ribbon skirt, you can always find a way, like put a sheet down, you know, sew one side, get your pins out, <laughs> put a sheet down, spray it again, put another one down. I mean, it's a lot of work, but you can do it. I mean, you know, we all know that. If there's a will, there's a way. <sighs> so I'm almost done all the way here to the other side. Okay. I hope you guys are doing good with your skirts right now let's see get this last one done and then we'll move on to how we do the next step i'm just making sure they're lining up correctly there we go and we're done with this side Now, I just generally use a zigzag because that's how that's the way I was taught. And if you want to go over and do any stitching onto it afterwards, that is how I would do it. I'd do it afterwards. Um, I wouldn't. I I personally like to use the zigzag because it looks very clean and polished. And then you can do other. If you're doing applique, then I use the special stitches for that. Let's see. So we've got all of these out of the way now. And we'll be using these again in a minute. Now we're gonna turn this upside down, or over, I mean. I'm gonna turn it this way. And you're going to have it lay, you're gonna, like I want you to do this, face it away from you, and you're gonna lay it down. Okay, you're gonna get your piece laying down like this all the way. You're gonna get your top one now and you can see also when you <laughs> the glue is sticking on the other side <laughs> it will you'll go to peel it up <laughs> so you want to get all of your wrinkles out again okay you're going to take this one make sure that your top is at the top now you're gonna have the most narrow part at the top and the wider part at the bottom right Okay, so you want to have this like this. You're gonna match up the corners, the sides, all the way down. And as you'll see, this dot right here, you're gonna line up your two dots. See that? If you line up your two dots right here, and then you smooth your fabric out in two different directions. Okay, go to this, uh, hold this side down on your ribbon, lift it up, go over here and start getting your wrinkles out. Okay, so now we have it flat. We're just going to repeat, only this time you don't have to measure if you're measuring an inch apart. So if you were measuring an inch apart or certain measurements apart, this is the time that you would actually not have to measure again because you've already got it in place. So now we're going to spray where the ribbon is. There we go. And piece of thread. Okay, so now I'm gonna get this one because this was my first one. Let's match it up on this side exactly. Give yourself a little leeway again. Now you're gonna wanna hold on to this and not pull tug, but keep it firm and taut, okay? You're gonna go all the way over here and match it up. And you're gonna start doing that again, all the way taut to the other side. See how that sometimes blows, has little bubbles in it and it seems to travel down. There's one, done. Move that one over there. I'm not even worried about going in layers because I can match them up. I mean, I could technically put this one down like this if I wanted to. However, sometimes you'll get a little gap. So once again, search your front and back. That's the front. A little extra. Cause I'm a little extra. We need a little extra. We all need a little extra sometimes, don't we? <laughs> all right, so here we go. There we go. 
is so simple, you know? Ribbon skirts are expensive because they take time. And, and people put a lot of prayer and heart into them. And they are a message. And yes, not everybody sews, you know? Sewing does take time and it takes skill and it takes patience, you know? I've been sewing for people for years. My children all remember I used to always have my sewing room serger, everything going <laughs> all the time. My kids always, I'd go to Nordstrom's. I would pick up, I would pick up clothes at their closing hour and I would go to the fabric store and I already have my pattern and I wanted to do is very similar. I'd go alter it and I'd make five. I had four little girls and I would make four little dresses at nighttime and take them back at nine in the morning. <laughs> We're talking petticoat kind of dresses, you know, for Christmas and stuff. Um, let's see, where's that orange? Here we go. Oh no, I may have a bad problem. Now I've done this before. Let's hope I have another piece or I will be pulling this apart. Uh -huh. Okay, let's see what we got. No, oh, mercy me. See what happens? <laughs> Okay, what do we do here? What am I gonna do to fix my problem? Hmm, Let's see what else we got in here. I got a lot of every other color, but guess what I get to do, guys? <laughs> that really bites the big one. <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter my pattern clearly because I don't have enough of that color. I cannot believe I did. Oh, oh, check it out. Oh yeah. Is that gonna, is that the same? It is not the same, doggone it. Okay, well that's okay. Cause here's my solution. I'm going to take the one off and put this one on. Hopefully I'll have enough of this one. If that doesn't work, this one is so close to the other one, I could technically get away with it, but I don't want to. So if this isn't gonna work, we'll go over. While you're doing your layering, I'm gonna continue to do my layering and I will fix my problem over here. Let's see how much we have of this. Watch this, nah, see, we don't have enough of that one either. How funny. Okay, so. What I'm going to do next is find another color of orange. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not the same one. I have all these little pieces. I'm running out of oranges, guys. I have all this thick stuff. That's it, thick stuff. Okay, maybe I'll just put a, this is hard. <laughs> Okay, I gotta do a little stress dance. <laughs> oh, mercy me. You know, that may not look so bad, but I don't like that one either. So, let me grab another color and figure this one out. I think, actually, I could, I could kind of, I think I could get away with. Where's that one? I have this one color, and it's like this. It's in one of those rolls. Oh boy, see, this is not good. <laughs> ah, maybe I'll just, you know what? For the sake of my sanity, <laughs> I'm gonna flip the other side and put the other color on. Okay, we're back in business, people. <laughs> All right, so I will have to do a minor adjustment on the other side. See, this is another beautiful thing about ribbon skirts is they are workable. You can change, if you run out of one kind, if you have others that you can work with, you can, you can fix it still. Let's see, where is that one color of orange right here? Get that one in there. All right, so now I have this side done, which is kind of neat because you can see the birds through, through
through that peach color. And I think, I think I may just add one more band of that gold. What do you think? One more band of gold, you guys? Let's see what we got here. Because I do believe there may be one smaller gold in there. And that one, yeah, there is. Look. So I have enough of this one. We could technically add one more thing to it. But I don't know. What do you think? Yes or no? You like the extra gold in there? The little thin band in there? I'll give you guys a look. I think that kind of looks pretty. What do you think? Yes or no? Let's see what you say. Okay, so I like that one. So we'll go ahead and we'll add. I think we're going to, you know what? That's just for the sake of everything. Let's just keep this simple. I think that's very pretty. I can always come back and add another one because I'm going to pick up on the other in a second here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut these out on the side. And once again, I'm going to do my pinning. I wonder what that would look like. See, here's the fun part. You can always go through and say, uh-oh. <laughs> I just pulled my ribbon up. <laughs> here's what we're doing. Okay, this is going to be simple. I'm done. Check me out. Clock me in. I'm down for the night after this ribbon skirt tutorial. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to do this. I decided. I made an executive decision, guys. <laughs> Those are hard to make sometimes, trust me. <laughs> okay, so we have this here like that, right? And now I'm going to use the gold. That's better. That looks better than the peach, I think. There we go. That's better. But see, you know, you could throw in a turquoise color. You could throw in whatever you want to throw in. It's just all a matter of there is no wrong when it comes to your wanting to express how you, how you want your skirt to look, you know. And if you have only so many things, make it look the best darn thing that it can look with what you have. And that's what I'm doing right now because I thought I had more of that orange. <laughs> Oh, I sent some ribbon out to a couple ladies so they could make some ribbon skirts, and I, I did send some orange. <laughs> I'm thinking I may have, may have gotten into my my bunch that I got for the skirt, but that's okay, because that makes me smile to think of people having their their ribbon on their skirts. So now I've done this right here. See, I'm gonna pin it like I did the other side. This time I'm gonna lift it up like this. I'm going to stick my hand underneath again. I'm going to grab my pins. Here they are. Now, I, I tend to pin wherever the smallest amount of fabric is. In this case, it's going to be in the middle. But if it's not, I like to pin like on the thinnest part where the it's going to go through the machine, facing my needles towards that direction because they're easier to pull out when you're going through. Hmm. Okay, so... Just pin those ends like that. Keep them in one place. Go back over there. Pin your other ends. That's the first thing you always want to do. I'm going to keep your hands un under. Go over here. Do the same thing. And then this one's actually a little bit easier to do than some of the other ones I've done. Because some of the other ones I've done, they're, <laughs> there's like so many and you're leaning over. and Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's just say I've got this whole thing pinned now, okay? For the sake of, I can come back on this one and do this. For the sake of time, I'm going to pin them in the middle, flip it over, and make that. So now what you would do is let's just say this is all pinned, okay? On both sides right here. What you would do now is take your all pinned piece right here and 
you're going to want to go over to the sewing machine and you're going to want to have your thread in that you're going to be using for your ribbon skirt. And as you can see, this is pinned all the way down here. And because I knew I was going to be doing this tutorial, I went ahead and I sewed the other five rows before the tutorial. Okay. So on this one right here, I don't have the bottom done so I can show you how to go ahead and do that. It's very simple. And then I'm going to give you guys a break um, to go and do all of your, sew all of your ribbon on and I'll come back in an hour and a half and show you after all of you, because I don't know how complex your ribbon is. I want you to have the time to sit there and pin it and, and to work with it and decide what you want to do. And then we'll be back in an hour and a half and I will show you how to finish up your ribbon skirt and you'll have a ribbon skirt by the end of the day. So let's go on over here. Okay, so this is my sewing area. Okay. Put my iron over here because we will be using an iron. Okay. So I'm going to pick up the phone in a minute and I'm going to bring you real close. Okay. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is find, now this one's in the middle, so it doesn't matter, but if it was the shortest end on here, I'd start here. I'm going to start here because my pins are facing this way. You see? I'm going to come here, and I want to put my stitch on zigzag. Let's see if I can tilt this a little bit. Hold on one sec. I don't remember how to do this thing. I have this tripod thing and I'm going to have to pick it up in a second. So what I'm going to do is I've got my thread in here. I've got my, my, um, say I have my gold thread right here. And I love this thread because you know what? It's so pretty and a normal thing of thread, you buy a lot of thread and it's expensive, right? You can, this, these have a lot of thread on it, this embroidery thread, and it's like $3.49 a spool. So it's really makes it, it really makes it night and day. I'll show you. It's like, look how pretty that is. Okay. So you're going to come over here. You're going to pull your pin, not out, but you're going to put your, let me show you. Okay. You see where that is right here? You've got your, um, your feet, uh, your, your foot. See if I can point right here is at the middle. It's going to be going in the middle right here. And you're going to sew down the side all the way down. Okay. And I'll do that right now. And always remember to do a back stitch because your stitching can come out. Okay. You ready? Pull out the pin. Okay, now I always grab it like this. Once there's enough material like this, I grab it in the back to give it tension, to keep it taut. Because that's how your fabric may move around, all right? You want to try to keep it flat. Now, if you have to, come on over here, roll this up. Oftentimes, I will roll up this side like this because it'll keep it flat. See? Like that. And it helps me when I'm going through a little bit to keep this taut like that. Try to keep it straight down the middle where I showed you. All the way down. Pull out your pin. Adjust your fabric. Keep it taut. This is the way I was taught to do it because if you keep your fabric straight and you keep it taut, it's going to lie flat and you're not going to have these little puckers and bundles, which happens, trust me. So keep it taut. There we go. Pull it out. You see how I'm working it? I'm just rolling it and keeping it going. Ooh, 
go slow enough so that you can see if you're causing an error or not, okay? Well, that sounded like my needle broke, but it didn't. I was like, what was that? <laughs> okay, so roll it again. As you're almost at the bottom, straighten it out on both sides because you want it. The more you work with your fabric, the more it's going to work with you. Okay, here we go again. See how that works? Look at that. It's going straight in. Okay, so basically you're going to go all the way down and then you're going to come back up to the top. You're going to completely do it again. Go through every one of your um, ribbons this way. And when you're done, you'll have a completed one of these on both sides of your, your panels. And then we'll go ahead and assemble your dress. So I'm going to leave you guys to do that. I'm going to check the time. I'm going to go and start the second event so that you guys know where to find it. I'm sorry the first one disconnected on you guys. So, um, And I will be back in, let's give you guys about an hour and... About an hour and 15 minutes. How's that? That work? Does that work? Anybody? Thumbs up? <laughs> okay. So I will be back in an hour and 15 minutes. Same place, same time. And um, we'll finish up your...